Welcome everybody, so glad you could come. It's just wonderful to be in a room full of love like this. Thank you. I'm Lauren Glendavidian, and I work with CCTV Center for Media and Democracy, and we are celebrating 30 years of community media in and around Burlington. In fact, in the state of Vermont, we're celebrating our anniversary on Friday. And we have been um, very fortunate to be part of the leadership in this community in ensuring that we can open the doors to local government and we can put media in the hands of the people and we can challenge establishment ideas because free speech is really manifest in Channel 17, in VCAM, which is here, this is the public access channel, and the public access community media facility, RATN, which is the educational resource, and there are 25 community media centers across Vermont and they run more than 44 channels. And in our 30 years, we've been involved with a number of innovative projects because we've always been looking forward to determine where the future is and how to ensure free speech on any kind of telecommunications network. In fact, we've been thinking about this since the early 1990s and have done a number of innovative projects to advance that work, including the old North End Community Technology Center, which folks might remember, and more, common, and, uh, more recently, Common Good Vermont, which is a nonprofit support project. But we're particularly excited to be looking into the future of community media with the Civic Cloud Collaborative. And the Civic Cloud Collaborative is a group of leaders in the field of community media, civic hacking, making, open government, and local government who have uh, committed time and resources to building a shared internet resource, a public access internet resource that allows us to develop civic applications and creative applications that are open to members of the public. And we're gonna talk today about the civic cloud, what it means for Burlington, how it harnesses the unique and important features of Burlington Telecom's gigabit network, and most importantly, how it harnesses the know-how and smarts and passion of the people of this community so that we can become a magnet for community and economic development applications and progress and, a, and an example for the country. So today we have a wonderful lineup of people here to talk about um, their role in the civic cloud, the benefit of the civic cloud, and some of those people, I'll just give a little bit of a rundown who's gonna be speaking. And uh, first we're gonna talk from the point of view of the Civic Cloud Collaborative Partners, and then the applications that the Civic Cloud will support, and then some of our other new partners that are coming into the fold. So we're gonna start with Bradley Holt, and uh, Bradley is with Foundline. He is also a brigadista in the um, in, the, in the Code for America Brigade, maybe you're a Brigadisto, I think that might be better, um, a brig, brigade, brigade leader of the Code for America, the Code for BTV chapter, and Bradley, if you, has, Bradley along with Jason Pelletier have been huge, huge commitment have provided a huge commitment of time and resources and vision to the Civic Cloud Project. Bradley, welcome. Thanks a lot, Glenn. So I just want to talk a little bit about the uh, Civic Cloud and um, how, how we've gotten to uh, where we are here today. So uh, first of all, the Civic Cloud is a platform for public, non-commercial internet applications and digital creative works. It's built on our city's fiber optic gigabit network, which provides internet speeds of over 100 times the average national broadband speed. The Civic Cloud has its roots in community media, as well as the maker movement and the civic hacking movement. Over the past year, we've worked with numerous individuals to define a, define a vision for civic and public access uses of our city's gigabit network. From this vision came the cultivation and nurturing of the Civic Cloud Collaborative, a group of local individuals and organi organizations with deeply aligned values. We are an inclusive group and are working to bring more people into this human collaboration network. An important milestone was reached a few weeks ago when the Civic Cloud was installed in the Burlington Telecom co-location facility. Uh, this work was completed with money from the Knight, Knight Prototype Fund, donated equipment, and a significant, significant amount of highly skilled volunteer labor. Applications already running on the Civic Cloud include high definition live streaming of public meetings and cultural events, a collection of volunteer developed applications that preserve and promote Vermont made music, and a multi-user educational game about the Lake Champlain Basin. We want to make sure that the Civic Cloud benefits our entire community and, not, and is not just a technical proof of concept. To this end, we have also conducted a series of research sessions with numerous collaborators and stakeholders. 
In one of these research sessions, a stakeholder asked, how is the Civic Cloud different than other clouds? Gigabit speeds, respect for user privacy, and a space for free expression are few of the most compelling answers to this question. One thing that we learned is that many of our stakeholders are people that, like us, are interested in participating in the improvement of their communities. Tools for civic hackers, nonprofits, and grassroots organizers were all recognized as important by those who participated in our research efforts. We will continue our outreach efforts through our local Code for America Brigade, hacker spaces, maker spaces, educational institutions, and community media centers. We invite civic hackers, software developers, and makers to use the Civic Cloud as a platform on which to build civic and public applications that will benefit our community. Thank you. Thank you so much, So Jim Lockridge of Big Heavy World, who is, um, Big Heavy is one of the first applications of the Civic Cloud, and Jim will talk about that application. And before Jim comes up, I'd just like to recognize um, a few people who have helped to do the the guts of the work. So many of us have been collaborators. Um, but the Jessica Bright, who, who came, I think it was two years ago, and said, we got to have a public rack space. How are we going to make that happen? And Andy Crawford, who is our IT director as well at CCTV, along with Jessica. Um, and the two of them have really dedicated many, many, many hours to the design, along with um, Justin England of Laboratory B and um, Evan Flynn, who is been working on behalf of uh, Big Heavy, and there's been just this team of developers sitting around the table uh, thinking of new solutions to thorny problems for many months, and this has been a, quite an important um, endeavor on their part, so it could not be happening without them. Thank you. <laughs> Jim Lockridge, Big Heavy World. Very happy for everybody to be here. Thank you. Uh, as a music office, Big Heavy World aspires to be world class in our effectiveness, our resourcefulness, and our inclusiveness. We try to accomplish the greatest public good possible with the resources we have. One of the resources that's abundant in Burlington is the spirit of collaboration. For as long as we've been around, since 1996, we found that the most effective way to serve is in partnership with people with complementary missions or the same community interests. And we've moved our work forward in partnership with organizations and including people of all interests and backgrounds for over 18 years, recognizing the value in collaboration, which is the foundation of how we accomplish anything. We're fortunate enough to have received the gift of some very beautiful servers from Google and to be surrounded by inspired, highly talented people and find the opportunity to share our good fortune with the wider community through this collaboration. So thank you for letting me make a point that, you know, us working together is something very special, that Burlington is very fortunate to, um, you know, to be such, a, such a, a fertile place for this kind of relationship to happen. I think we should all feel lucky that in general terms, um, people can come together productively and with the same high hopes and aspirations and success that, that we're experiencing through the Civic Cloud Collaborative. So, um, you know, as a, as a baseline for where our joy comes from, you can kind of point to that. Um, as far as the applications go, Big Heavy World has been around for a long time. We serve our music community inclusively, whether you're a, a, a new band, a high school band, or an established artist. We do our best to come to understand what you could use as a resource to help yourself. We come from a very do-it-yourself mentality. We, uh, we have a, a great affinity for underground music communities that support themselves. And we're very up in it and under the hood in anything we try to build as a resource. Uh, and the, the evidence of that is our website. We've rebuilt it over the last year to be mobile responsive. We're working towards uh, uh, accessibility now, um, trying to create just the ideal shared universal music community serving resource or set of applications that we can. We're all volunteer staff. When I reference that we do what we can with the resources we have, those resources are fairly meager. So, you know, this, this collaboration is a group of people uplifting an effort to do very highly technical work in service to many people. And, uh, and you know, you can bounce around bigheavyworld.com to see how that looks, you know, coming out the other end in the real world. Uh, Recently, we've uh, accomplished construction of an audio app that plays 
ten thousand or more songs from our music archive of vermont made music it operates in the fashion of a library where as you check music out and listen to it yourself it's not available to others and you can't download it freely you can only experience it in the virtual library setting you know these are features that volunteers helped us construct moving forward we're looking forward to expanding our ability to broadcast live uh, at will from any downtown live music venue via the website and our community radio station which also streams in multiple formats including HD video through the website located on the cloud so you know we recognize that the cloud represents a uh, an opportunity for basically an infinite horizon of creativity and construction of applications that help us accomplish our mission and we're intensely grateful to be a part of it and to have any relation to the extremely talented people that are helping build it so thank you so there's there's a lot of talk about the cloud in the in the industry and in the press and pretty much anywhere you look um, the cloud and how all of our work and everything that we're doing is moving into the cloud and so it's important I think that um, we're hearing today that to underscore that that is the commercial cloud that is a cloud that is controlled by interests who are storing our our um, our content and charging us for it and the more we use the more we pay and what is really important and unique about the civic cloud is that it is not only community controlled it would be privacy protected but it also is a locally accessible and um, usable resource that will be available at, for reasonable rates if at all so we're working on the structures of that but in the meantime as Jim said the early applications will include um, music archives, streaming events, streaming concerts, streaming meetings that we would run on channel from Channel 17 and the other community media resources. And then also a really exciting project, Lakecraft, which has been developed in conjunction with the Echo Center. And here to talk about it is Nina, Nina Ridabigne. Ridabigne, I think I've, all right. Thank you. Would you come and talk about the Lakecraft project? Hi, I'm Nina Ritabinho. I'm an educator at the ECHO Lake Aquarium and Science Center. And our mission at ECHO is to educate and delight people about the ecology, culture, history, and opportunities for stewardship in the Lake Champlain Basin. Um, and we kind of stumbled across Code for BTV and uh, the Civic Cloud about a year ago um, at this time. Um, and it's been, I think, a really inspirational relationship for us at ECHO. Um, similar to the Civic Cloud, we are an organization that engages a lot with technology, but also civic engagement. Um, we are a science center, but we also have a real stewardship mission to engage the public in their local watershed. Um, so a year ago, I came to Code P to B TV with this idea that came out of a freshwater summit that we did down at ECHO with people from across the country, um, in which um, someone from the Agency of Natural Resources, David Mears, stated that he wished that his child spent less time playing Minecraft um, and more time playing something that he envisioned as Lakecraft. Um, and during the summit, we were trying to figure out how to gamify um, watersheds, how to make watersheds engaging for youth. Um, and I was really inspired by this idea of taking this very, very popular game, Minecraft, which I'm sure if you have kids you have heard about, um, and turning it into um, a forum to engage youth in watersheds. Um, and so at uh, last year's National Day of Civic Hacking, um, we got some coders together, um, Nick Florsch from Stone Environmental and Will Fallows, um, and they built a one-fourth scale model of our watershed using open data on the Lake Champlain Basin. Um, and since that time, they've been adding other data into the world, including um, our, our local roads and waterways. Um, and the Civic Cloud has created the perfect forum for this world, this virtual world that actually requires a lot of um, bandwidth. Um, for users and it's a multi-user environment um, and so it's our vision that children and adults will be able to um, explore this world together um, through the civic cloud and also download this world and to continue to evolve this world um, with their um, what they see in the world but also what they envision the world to be around us um, and so we're really grateful to be part of the civic cloud 
um, that this exists for our community and see great potential for it when it comes to education. Um, and recently I was at a conference, Dynamic Landscapes, um, where educators came together and talked about how they were using technology in the classroom. And I think there were no less than four workshops on Minecraft. Um, and educators who were interested in how were they going to execute something that required um, a certain software, required certain bandwidth um, to deliver to their students. And I talked to them about the Civic Cloud and the great potential that it has to provide services to our schools and other educational institute, institutions, um, especially with um, not just the infrastructure itself, but all of the brilliant people um, who come along with it to help them execute that vision. It's also important to point out that the Knight Foundation has been a big underwriter of this first phase of the project. They provided a prototype grant so that we could actually get started. And uh, Bradley's going to Pittsburgh to report to them tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to make a case for continued support. And I think that um, their interest in this is, as Nina mentioned, the work as a model for the rest of the country. We're really our prototype, not only prototyping it here, but creating a, uh, a blueprint for other people to follow. So documenting what we're doing is a very important piece of the work. So um, there are two other uh, supporters from the local government community. Um, we have Ruby Simon and Nate Wildfire. And uh, Nate is with the Community Economic Development Office. And his perspective on the value of the cloud and how it ties into the city's US Ignite initiative would be very helpful to hear, followed by Ruby talking about the library's involvement with Code for BTV and their hopes for the cloud. Thank you, Nate. So um, it was great. You said educate and delight, and Jim said our joy. And when you think of government, you don't often think of joy and delight. Um, <laughs> but I, I'll use a different word. Uh, at, at CEDO, at the Community and Economic Development Office, we're inspired. We're extremely inspired by, um, the, to, to echo what you said, the collaboration and folks really coming together. And quite frankly, a lot of folks that um, we don't typically always work with. There's this wonderful um, groundswell of just energy and attention being paid. Um, and I'm sure you've all been doing it for years. But within our halls at City Hall, it, it's so inspiring to see such energy coming around things like the Civic Cloud. Uh, we were inspired uh, last fall um, we, were, we launched our BTV Ignite initiative, and this is an initiative that uh, ties to the U.S. Ignite initiative, which uh, recognizes and capitalizes on gigabit speed um, infrastructure, typically mun municipally run infrastructure throughout the country as a platform to build new applications uh, across the country, whether those are, um, as, as you had said earlier, some of these more commercial-based applications, or as I'm seeing increasingly, especially with things like Lakecraft, these more civic-minded applications. Uh, recently, I, I had the pleasure of coming to one of the civic ha hacking events. And any of you that know me uh, even a little bit know that I might be the least technical person in this entire room. And I was blown away, blown away by the, the, um, the talent and by the, the willingness to just give time to challenges that our region faces, whether that's taking care of our, our lake sh watershed, whether that's in my personal favorite, figuring out how the parking system in Burlington should work better, whether that's understanding how energy can be better utilized in civic owned buildings and other buildings. We have so much ability to use the data now at our fingertips to solve problems that we all share. And as a representative of our local government, I'm just really thankful that um, all of you and the folks that we work with keep bringing talent and time and capacity to, to these challenges. So we're totally inspired um, to make more connections between the Civic Cloud Collaborative and BTV Ignite and continue to grow this so that we're a model nationally. We, the folks at US Ignite keep telling us we're we're at the top of their list. I don't understand necessarily how they create those lists, but I'm pumped to be there. So um, I'm going to be telling, I'll be coming back to most of you, if not all of you, uh, in the next year to say how can we, as, as the city of Burlington, continue to work even more uh, with you to solve our shared challenges. Thanks. Thank you, Nate. <laughs>
Ruby, welcome. As you can tell, I'm much shorter than Nate, so let's see if this works, but yeah, <laughs> he's tall. There we go. Um, you know, I want to echo what Nate said. Uh, I think as employees of the city and the various departments, we are feeling and seeing that energy, you know, from this whole movement of US Ignite, uh, Code for BTV, um, and it's, it's creating a sense of opportunity for us and an engagement that I think maybe we didn't know was could be realized. Um, so that piece is, is so exciting and it, it, it's motivating us all at a different level. Um, you know, I, I started about a year and a half ago at this in this position and hearing just all the people that have been working on this project and the many years is incredibly impressive. But I feel I'm probably one of the luckiest because I'm coming to the end of of the whole project and seeing it actually come to light and enjoying the benefits of it. So uh, I feel very fortunate with that. Uh, what does that mean for us in the library? Um, you know, the first couple of months when I started this position, one of the first people I met was Bradley, Jason, Jim, Stephen Barenclaw from BT, and it, it, it made this job completely all worth, you know, coming into, into play. And um, we, in those first few months, accomplished so much for this library and for this com community. BT ensured that we got the one gigabyte capabilities and made us one of the few libraries in the country to have that capacity. Um, what did that mean? It opened so many other options for us. Working with Jason and Bradley, um, we are creating a plan to you know, increase the capabilities of this public library for our community. We're a central, neutral meeting space for a community. We're an information managers, and how do we disseminate that? And what a better way to do it with the Civic Cloud? It's giving us and our staff an opportunity to really look and realistically take on, um, you know, new collections that we had never considered being a possibility for us in terms of, you know, those digital collections that um, many libraries can't do it because they don't have the one gig or the civic cloud such as us um, at, its, at its, you know, front steps. Uh, one of the projects we're working on right now is a software lending program. Uh, that's exciting. You know, we hope in the next year we're going to see some major movement and uh, very few other places are doing something like this. So we're definitely on the cutting edge working with Kansas City, the US Ignite initiative, and um, it's an exciting time for us. It's an exciting time for public libraries, and the Civic Cloud is going to make all of this possible for us. Um, and we, we're looking forward to all the open doors and opportunities that this is going to bring for us and our community. We can't underscore the, uh, enough the value of Burlington Telecom's partnership. Burlington Telecom, we're all nodding our heads. Burlington Telecom has, um, unlike most uh, telecommunication operators, because they are locally owned and because their capacity is quite immense, we have been able to, through their generosity, not only connect public locations without a lot of um, negotiation, that <laughs> they've just seen that this is a benefit to the city, and they've also just very willingly stepped up and become a partner of the Civic Cloud and made their gigabit network available to us and to the people of the city. So uh, this is a, a gigantic benefit for us, and uh, we, we, as I said, cannot thank Burlington Telecom enough. Another huge infrastructure partner and visionary partner is the University of Vermont, who also has, um, is offering the capacity of Internet 2 to, community, to commun community organizations. And Dan Harvey is here from the University of Vermont because he has um, invested in the generator, which is a, a makerspace. We consider the Civic Cloud to be the virtual makerspace, the sister of the generator. We'll, we'll hear from Michael Metz in a moment, but also Dan Harvey um, from UVM is going to come up first and um, talk to us about what the university's view of uh, the cloud and comparable projects are. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, as Lauren Glenn said, my name is Dan Harvey, and I'm the director of operations for the vice president for research uh, at UVM. And uh, I'd like to actually start by congratulating Lauren Glenn and her staff and partnering media organizations on your 30th anniversary. It's fantastic. Uh, 
Lauren Glenn and I were UVM students together way back when, and uh, I'm a former media guy myself, many years at Vermont Public Television, um, and I'm just thrilled to see the ongoing success of CCTV and RETN and VCAM. Uh, tons of friends that still work there, uh, including one here tonight uh, in the back. Um, and I really would love to know the number of hours of programming that, that your organizations have done over the years. It has to be in the hundreds of thousands of hours, and it's just uh, fantastic to see you thriving so much. Um, uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to be here today and talk about UVM and UVM's support of innovation, including the cloud, Civic Cloud, and that's really just the most recent in a string. Um, actually, many of you uh, I've gotten to know over the past year, uh, Bradley and Jason, with the, uh, some hackathons, Code for America Brigade, uh, Nate and Peter Owens and Cito in the mayor's office with the BTV Ignite Initiative, which is just fantastic. Stephen Baraklov, BT, thank you for bringing up Burlington Telecom. Their infrastructure and support of this initiative is fantastic. There's a little sign right on the door right there. You've got free Wi-Fi right now because of them. Um, so they're fantastic. Um, we've been dealing with, of course, uh, Generator. I'm a founding board member of Generator, and Michael Metz and our friends at Champlain College have been just fantastic. And uh, I will say that uh, at UVM, it took a little while to get the vice president and the provost and president to understand that civic hacking is a good thing. Uh, <laughs> the term hacking has some funny connotations, but Bradley and Jason have been fantastic in really teaching me and allowing UVM to be part of, uh, of those initiatives and all the other ones. Um, and uh, really, we like to say at UVM that UVM is open for business. Um, and that's a little tricky when you have over 3,000 employees. It's sometimes hard to find the front door. Um, but we've created a business engagement portal. Um, we are going to tie in the Civic Cloud, BTV Ignite, uh, Internet2, which is really through EPSCOR and the state colleges. Um, all, all these initiatives are fantastic. And uh, I just want to say on behalf of UVM, we're thrilled to be involved and uh, look forward to our continued involvement. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Dan. You look all younger than me to have been at school together. <laughs> just, just saying, just saying. <laughs> Michael Metz, Michael is a founder of The Generator, and The Generator is a, a partner of our work at the Civic Cloud and is also helping lead the charge for high bandwidth applications for community and economic development, future and prosperity of Burlington. Michael? I don't have that much to add. Um, again, I'm Michael Metz. I'm, among other things, the director or the president of the Board of Generator. It's a very new organization. It's a maker space. We've had a tremendous amount of support from the city, from um, various city departments, from Burlington Telecom, just like Dan had mentioned, Burlington Telecom, with a flick of a switch, gave us gig internet access. We now have it wireless across the whole building. We have uh, two really high-end computers wired that UVM provided us. We want in our space folks who are working on civic applications that need or will provide a competitive advantage using gig internet access. We want software applications development folks there. We're reaching out to the, to the, the community, to, to this community. We want to reach out more. We're going to sponsor as many hackathons as we have capacity to, to present. Um, we do intend to go out into the software community, into my web grocers, into dealer.coms, and ask them, reach out, try and find applications folks who need a place that's free or essentially free to do their software development. That's what we want to do with Generator. Generator, as we said, is a makerspace. You make with all kinds of tools. We'll have a full range of tool sets, but one of the critical tool sets is being able to make on the internet. So, thank you very much. Lauren Glenn, I haven't known you as long as Dan, but we've known each other a bit. And thank you to the city. Um, they've really provided Generator a tremendous amount of help that uh, would have been impossible. Thank you, UVM. And Champlain College isn't here, but thank you, Champlain College. They've been a great partner. So collaboration and partnership is at the core of any successful endeavor, and that's, I think, something that our close-knit community is really excels at and the social capital that we've all built over many years is as much a factor in building the civic cloud today as um, any of the technology and the smarts that we have at the table. Uh, Seth Mobley is here. He runs VCAM and he also is the chair of the board of the Vermont Access Network and we thought it was a, would be a good wrap up to have um, Van as um, we know 
uh, Seth represents, as I said, at least 25 community media centers that are operating nearly 50 channels across the state of Vermont. This idea of public access and open networks is something that is deeply rooted in the DNA of our state. And we have um, never had a hard time selling the concept of public access in any community across Vermont. And we certainly have been fortunate to have the resources from cable ratepayers to make that dream happen. And now that um, the cable industry is changing and the internet really is an important platform for community and economic development, um, we're all together looking forward. So Seth, if you could come give us some concluding remarks, thank you. All right, hey everybody. Um, so yeah, on behalf of VCAM, we are thrilled about this project. Like you, there's lots of local excitement in the room. And uh, I thought I would take this opportunity to let you all know that there's also statewide, statewide excitement about this uh, project as well uh, on behalf of uh, the Vermont Access Network, better known as VAN. Um, one of the big ideas that's being thrown around right now by VAN is this concept of a statewide content archive that would be highly searchable and, um, and contain a lot of the, the, the programming, a lot of the thousands of hours of programming that Dan thoughtfully pointed out um, in one locale that people can search and find things that are important to them, to their, and to their communities, uh, and to the state. And in talking about that, and simultaneously in this project going on, um, Van saw immediate possibilities in, in working with uh, the Civic Cloud project. And who knows? I mean, maybe Scott might have more to say about this, but perhaps the archive could someday live on the Civic Cloud. Um, and being as uh, having the connectivity that BT affords um, this project, people all over the state could be searching quickly through through content that's very important to them. And so, on behalf of Van, I'd just like to say that there's there's lots of excitement around the state about this project as well. So, thank you, everybody. Scott Campitelli of RETN is also a partner of the cloud, and uh, together the VCAM Channel 17 and, and RETN are known as BAMO, the Burlington Access Management Organizations, BAMO. And um, we're just very excited to be working together on this and other initiatives together, including an LPFM radio station application and uh, other exciting projects. So I want to thank everyone. If there's any um, additional comments, closing comments, or questions, where the floor is open before we wrap up. Anybody feel that we missed a point or want to say something or want to just stand up and say, Viva the cloud? It's OK. <laughs> Viva the cloud. Any questions from? Uh, OK. All right. Excellent. Well, I'd like to thank everybody very much. And uh, we have great work more. We have done a lot of work so far together. And we have a lot more work to do. And we're really looking forward to the next 30 years. Thank you. <laughs>